So today, uh, I know I said last time that we were going to start with some kind of clicker or something like that. I changed my mind just because of time and stuff like that. Uh, it didn't really make sense to to do that, I, I don't think. Um, we could, you know, if you're interested in a game like that, we could definitely talk about that. Um, so today, I figure we're going to talk about input and movement, basically. Um, mostly going to talk about like eight directional movement to start with, just because I think that uh, that's the easiest sort of in route to making a character move on screen. Um, so grab a coffee, whatever, grab a text editor, and let's get into it. I'm not going to like talk at you too much today, I don't think. I'm more going to uh, show some code and show talk through how, how this code works. Um, so the first game that we're going to make is all, again, pretty simple. It's like, it's going to be, there's a character on the screen, character, it, I'm just going to make it a box. I can show you how to make it like a character, uh, a drawing, you know. Um, but mine's just going to be a box for now. Um, and uh, it's going to move around and collect a bunch of coins. There are going to be a bunch of coins on the screen. Coins, again, they're going to be smaller boxes. Um, it, they don't have to be coins. They could be like bones or leaves or something like that kittens um but i'm i'm framing them as coins i could frame them as bones that's maybe more <laughs> more my vibe but um uh you got to pick them all up before the time runs out and if the time runs out you lose and if it doesn't you win um at the end i, I might give some like the end of next time probably because that's probably when we're gonna finish uh yeah, it is heckin' game dev. <laughs> uh, I, you literally made me look at uh, look at my title and make sure I didn't write <laughs> something like that. Um, and um, and yeah, so at the end of, of next session, um, I might give give some ideas for like how to change and improve and uh, make weirder what we have but like that's that's the basic structure of, of this first game um yeah <laughs> you you know me uh how are you tonight nolan um so uh we're gonna jump right into it um gonna pull up my notes i have so many text editors open it's like uh it's a problem um I, I should actually do one of these so that I could see both my notes and you all. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is, and like I said, I'm just gonna we're just gonna go right into text editor today. Um, I'm not going to talk to you. I just have two slides today. One that's like, um, oh yeah. <laughs> That sounds like so much. Um, here, here's 12 raspberry pies. Make us uh, whatever, whatever. Um, I, I have a few raspberry pies I need to figure out something to do with. Um, so this is just what we had last time, if you recall. It's a, a box that moves when you hold down the space, space bar. Um, and that's, that's nothing. I mean, it's something, but it's really not much. So, but we... You know, there, there's some stuff there, right? There's how we get key presses, right? Um, we're going to talk a bit more about, about all this today. Um, and there's how to draw stuff to, to the screen. So, I'm going to... <laughs> that, that happens. Um, we're going to get rid of, of all this basically start with a fresh project. That's awesome. I'm glad that it works. Um, which uh, which operating system kernel are you using? Uh, I need, need to figure out like what I'm going to put on, on my several Raspberry Pis. So, if you'll recall, we got this, this function, which just does all of our setup actions, right? So this is like where we put our original initial variables and things like that. We got this, 
which runs every frame, and we're gonna talk about what this DT means today. Um, and that's where kind of like all of our logic goes and stuff like that. Um, and we got this, which is where all of our graphics information goes, right? So let's uh, let's start by again drawing a box. Uh, graphics dot rectangle, and so this is I kind of like just did this last session, but I'm gonna kind of dig more into like what what this all means. Um, this is like one of the functions that exists inside of Love. So like. Love is built on C, basically. Well, yeah, like you don't have to worry about like all the all the little technical bits of like how how love is put together. I don't know know most of it, but um, uh, there are ways in like C and C plus plus and stuff like that to to get gra graphics on on a screen. Obviously, um, they are way more words than than this. Um, you know, you have to access memory and and stuff. Um, so love provides us with like a little uh way more concise way of of writing out um things like how to draw a box to the screen so this is we're as we talked about last time this is basically us calling a function but it's not a function that we wrote right it's a function that exists inside of love and that it gives us to be able to use for whatever we need it for um, and if you'll recall, we had um, we wrote a function that had some arguments last time. These are some arguments that that um, the rectangle function has, and they're all the arguments that the rectangle function has. So the only one that might not be obvious is this one mode. Um, this takes a word. It's either fill or line. Um, so we're going to let's sort of make it fill. Um, then we have these these right we have an x and a y and a width and a height so the width and the height are also obvi pretty obvious i would say so let's i don't know we get like 50 and 50 and if you'll recall x and y just means oh uh, yeah game dev we're doing it um uh we got this x and this y and these are just where it is on the screen right so if you'll recall uh i'm going to i'll just put it at like 100 100 just so I could open it open the the program save it and if you'll recall top left corner is zero zero and it goes up to the screen width basically um, I forget what it defaults to we could like set that if we want we could also change it if we want and then starts at zero on the Y and downward goes to whatever the the height of the screen is um so but now what if we want to move this right um well first let's let's talk about how we get input right because we talked about that, that a little bit last time but we're going to you know dig more into it now um so there's this this thing in programming right uh called a conditional um often it's a statement that's like if something happens then something else happens it's a very like rudimentary basic thing that that exists in almost all programming languages um i'd be hard pressed to think of like a, a language made in the last like several decades that that doesn't have if statements in it um you know i'm sure that they exist um but i can't think of any off the top of my head um so that that's basically like how we ask a computer to move a thing right or to to get some kind of key press to start because we're going to get a key press push a key down and then that's going to translate into something happening on the screen um so move these paper towels also because they're kind of in my way um the the set of functions that that uh gets key presses in love is comes from a uh a part of love basically called keyboard uh, so it's like love dot keyboard um, dot is down that's so we're going to talk about this a bit more but like this when we say love anywhere in our code basically is referring to the whole engine right so anything that exists inside of love already is probably going to be prefaced with this this love um, 
keyword. And then we're going to look at like what's called a class basically inside of, of the entire engine and this one's called keyboard. And then we're gonna look for a function inside of that. Um, and in this case, it is down. So that's, we're basically asking the computer to see if a key is pressed. But we haven't really like done that yet um, because we need to like do one of these. So we say if love keyboard is down and we're gonna check for a key. So um, like I said space last time, then do something. And we always have to end our conditional statements with the phrase end. Cool. Um, and you can look up what all, what all the keys are. Um, for our purposes right now, we're going to uh, do check for up. And then, as you might imagine, um, we're going to do one of these, else if. So that just checks to see if there is like another thing. So if this is not true, but something else kind of in this chain is true, we might want to uh, add another basically basically like another segment to that to that chain. So um, this is kind of saying like if this is pressed, do whatever's in here. But if this isn't pressed, but this is pressed, then do whatever's in there, right? So love.keyboard dot is down. We're gonna just check for down. Then and, uh, don't want that. Then else if love dot keyboard dot is down. And we're gonna say left then else if love dot key keyboard dot is down right and I'm also gonna indent all of these uh, because I'm missing an end at the end of, of that and don't want that. All right, so. Yeah, I could do that. Um, like, I could I could make them all, like, their own if statements. Um, like, you know, if this, and if that, do that, do, and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm gonna do it, keep, keep it like this for now. Um, could could also do like one of these, which I might actually do instead. Um, do like a group for for each. Whatever. Um, all right, so I'm going to set up a few variables now. Um, and we're this is all stuff that we're kind of gonna change, but I want to step through it like step by step in order to, so that, you know, those of you who haven't programmed much before aren't super overwhelmed. Um, so to start, let's just make a variable called like rect x equals, I said 100, right? That's where we could start rect y equals 100. And for the sake of fun, let's just make a <laughs> rect w equals 50 rect h equals 50. So all of these don't really mean anything yet. They're just numbers. We haven't really given them any kind of purpose yet um, until we like put them in some kind of context in which they'll be used. So to do that, I'm going to replace these with those, right? So this is rect x, rect y, is with the height. It doesn't, they're the same number, so whatever, but uh, um, so now if I save and play, uh, messed up 
there, that's fine. It's the same. So, uh, as you might imagine, we just kind of like replaced some of these values with the same values. But now we could do something where we uh, we can move the, the rectangle now, right? Um, because we have access to, to this and we can change this because this is just a number, right? Um, that is, again, saved because we, we made it into a variable. So um, for right now, let's just say here where we say up rect uh, is rect y equals rect y. Let's make a, another variable that's like speed. This is going to have to be really high for now for reasons. Let's make it like 300 or something like that. Um, minus speed. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, because remember, we to, to move um, up, we need to move the box we need to subtract because the higher you are to the top of the screen, the closer to zero you are. Um, so, so now if I save that, go up, it disappears. Um, and that was probably my mistake, but that is in part because of because of this little thing. So we're going to talk about what what uh, the DT means here. Um, yeah, it's it's frustrating. Like I get why it happens, but it'd be cool if like they just people who are making the engine switch that or something like that. I know it's not that easy, but um, so it disappeared because basically of how computers work um, and how computer frame rate computer frame rate works. Um, so. We got this little thing called DT here, and that that stands for delta time. Um, and what that does is, um, it's basically a measure of uh, the time between the current frame and the last frame. Um, computers are really fast, and the the bottom line when when you're uh, writing code for computers that are like deal with real time movement and stuff like that is that um, your uh, you can't assume necessarily that that um, your you want your your program to be able to run on every machine at about the same speed, right? Um, and computers run at a kind of a bunch of different frame rates. Um, so this this DT thing exists to like stabilize that. So if we multiply our our this by this, it's going to make it so that it will run at the same speed. Um, yeah, you could do that, I, I assume, but, like, um, I, I don't really know, like, how to do that, because I've not built an engine before. Like, this engine's open source, so I'm, I'm sure that someone could go into it and, and, and make that happen. Um, I, I, I guess that there are ways that you could, you could do it on, like, the, when you're like at this stage, but um, yeah, now you got me thinking about about like you could probably probably do that. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if you meant like me specifically. I mean, like I probably could, but it would be outside the scope of, of this particular thing that we're doing right now. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do movement. Let's rebuild the coordinate system of this engine. Um, <laughs> like something like you know things like Unity and like three D engines generally have. Um, uh, I I could be an engine. <laughs> um, so let's just multiply this by by this, um, and then we, we'll probably have to tweak with how fast our our thing is. But yeah. Okay. Um. I'm gonna turn this down to like 10. <laughs> I'm gonna move this also down to like, uh. Yeah, a potatoes game engine if you want it to be. Um, let's move that 
down a little bit. Yeah, so it's it's going it's going slow. Uh, we could we could trim the speed up a, a bit if we wanted to. Let's make it like a hundred. I'm I'm not gonna fill it with this too much because um, yeah. it's it's a little choppy at first, but that I think that's just because I have like too much stuff open on my computer. Um, but yeah, so like now we could just like fill this out for the rest of the stuff, and then we'll have a thing that. Uh, that does so now we can move up and down cool um and same thing and you know we're gonna obviously like um if we we open this up again you can see my cursor right um this way uh towards yeah you can see my cursor okay um this way is gonna be plus this way is gonna be minus this time um so rect x plus uh, equals rect, rect x plus speed. Uh, that's wrong. I don't know what left and right are. So uh, rect x equals rect x plus speed. Uh, and gotta multiply it by dt. So now we, we have a little little box that moves around. Um, so that's something, right? Um, how are we doing on time? We're doing adequate on time. Whoop. The wrong thing. There we go. I want to have you all back. So that's something, and it, but like, that's, you know, we don't want to make a game like this, right? Like, the, imagine having like 12 different enemy types and like a bunch of weapons and stuff like that. This, like coding things like this would, will eventually be a nightmare, right? If we just have a variable for every value that we want. So we're gonna do something that's like, we're this is like step one in like organizing our code a little bit better. I'm gonna be talking about like ways to do this kind of throughout the course of this um, of this thing, uh, but this is like step one to making our code a little bit more readable and a little bit nicer. Um, so we talked like very briefly about data structures last time. Um, but we're gonna talk now about like more, more about what they are. Um, so a data structure, as I said last time, is more or less a, a var variable that can hold a bunch of different values. Um, and what those values are and how many it can hold and stuff like that are, are uh, dependent on what kind of data structure it is. Uh, Lua has one type of data structure, it's called a table. Um, and if you know anything about programming, if you know anything about object-oriented programming especially, um, we could kind of use tables to fake being objects. There are a bunch of, um, and we'll, we'll get into some of this probably a bit later on, uh, a bunch of libraries for, um, for love specifically that, that allow us to do like kind of fake object-oriented stuff in it, and they all kind of have tables on their back end. Um, a table, if you, again, if you know about programming, is kind of like an associative array or something like that, or a dictionary. Um, but I don't want to say more versatile, but like it could do more stuff because, again, it's the the only data structure that is in Lua, so it has to kind of do everything. Um, and again, we're going to use it kind of as an object for our purposes. So to create a table, um, we're going to give it a name. Or let's call this one player player equals and then we're just going to there are again a bunch of ways to define a table also and the way that we're going to do it is just to to do this so this means player equals empty table basically um we could populate it in the beginning also give it a bunch of parameters but I'm, i like doing it this way i don't know why um and then we're going to uh 
uh, give it some variables. So the way that that again, like all those words that I said a moment ago, kind of work is that they're like a like a dictionary, for instance, holds um, information in what's called key value pairs. So there's a key, which is like a word or something like that, and then a value, which is what that word means. It's almost like having a bunch of variables inside of your variable. Um, and rather than like just being a value, like a, a normal array or a list or something like that, um, they have a way of looking them up, kind of. And um, tables work in the same sort of way. Uh, and make that even more explicit, kind of. Um, you see down here where we have this dot, right? This uh, is called dot notation sometimes, which means that we're we're looking for this this function, which is inside of this class, which is inside of this class, um, or like library or, or whatever your sort of thing you're looking for it in. Um, and we can basically like kind of do that with tables also. So we could say like player dot x equals uh, 100. So that means this value 100 is a variable called x that lives inside of player. So then like if we had like an enemy table, I'm not gonna actually make this right now. Uh, so yeah, like let's say we had an enemy table, and we could say enemy dot x. This would refer to a different value value than this. So it makes organizing our code way easier. Um, now let's just like fill out all these. So we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, same same as these, just equals 300, correct. Oh, sorry, player dot w equals 50, player dot h equals 50, player.speed equals 100. So now we can just get rid of these and replace these. So x, y, w, h, and we have to replace them here also. So to, to get the multiple cursor thing, I'm just holding down Alt and Control. So, so it's Y. This one is X. Um, and made a mistake there. Should be just times DT. Uh, let's see if uh, I made any typos or anything like that. One. Cool. Right off the bat. Uh, oop, oop, oop. Twenty-two. So this. Let's let's look at this for a moment. Um, so, whenever we're like debugging in in uh, love, it brings up it brings up whenever we, we have an error. We're gonna talk about debugging more later, um, but you know this is uh, a fine time because there's a, an error. It brings up this. It, it's pretty good about telling you where your error is, especially when there's a syntax error, which means like a kind of error that uh, where there's like a typo in the actual text, right? Um, and so this one's telling us that main.lua, so that tells us the file name, line 22, and then expected near end. Uh, so I I just accidentally put a dot there. Um, let's see if there are any more, because there might be. No, okay, so now we're, we're a little box moving around, and now we can do things like, uh, you know, add, uh, I don't even know what we'd want to add to this to prove my, or to show why this is useful or whatever. But like, if you can imagine like having, if you have multiple types of entities, it becomes really helpful to be able to uh, say like, okay, uh, this is, um, 
this is all the stuff that belongs to this, right? Um, before we move on, also, I, I want to quickly um, show you all uh, how to like mess with colors and stuff like that. Because, like I said, I'm gonna be um, uh, mostly doing this with boxes and and stuff. But you know, we can we can make um, our our characters and stuff like that uh, prettier by changing their colors and, and stuff. Um, so for the for the time being. Uh, we have this thing. This is the, our only thing that's drawing anything right now. So it's a uh, love dot graphics dot rectangle, whatever. We could put a um, love dot graphics dot set color function um, on top like that, and then we we get this. Um, yeah, like I like I like pretty boxes, and like it it becomes e like when we make like an enemy or whatever, we we will want to um, make maybe denote those as being red or, you know, whatever. Um, those of you who have used uh, computers that have color, like any kind of code that deals with color, like be it CSS or, um, or you know, whatever ga other game engines you've used or, or uh, you know, a anything <laughs> really uh, that uses com color in, in uh, computers are probably familiar with, with the idea of like, hex codes and stuff like that um and like rgba notation uh love has like a, a zero to one thing so like as opposed to zero to 255 or or whatever you, um you might be used to i think that unity does this now also where like zero is nothing and um i'm gonna get rid of alpha because we're not gonna use an alpha channel and one is maximum so you know, give us a kind of teal, teal colored box. Um, and you know, you can look up like what, what hex code you want. But yeah, that's, that's a nice, we got a nice seafoam character. Um, cool. So, I hope this all makes sense so far. If it doesn't, you know, post in chat, whatever. I, I, uh, I will try to answer questions to the best of my ability, but it seems like there aren't any right now. Um, so the next thing, let me see if there's anything else that I uh, wanted to talk about with regards to um, tables. Uh, no, I think that this is like, does the table stuff make sense? Just want to check that because like that's kind of like a pretty important thing in in um love programming it's kind of how we're going to be organizing all of our code from here on out um so you know let me know if that doesn't make sense uh but so there's like a slight problem cool uh with with this movement and i'm gonna try to get through like how this all works today it might like my explanation might run a little, uh, hmm. Cool. Oh, hey, hey, Bever, I didn't know that you were here or that you could get here. Cool. Um, all right, actually, hmm. Do we want to do, like, uh, movement, movement phase two or start, start on, the other well let's 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 talk about how to make our movement better because there's a problem with this this mode of movement um because of basically just how the math checks out you know um and that is that uh our diagonal we move faster on um so let's, uh, in the next 20 minutes or so, try to make it so that that doesn't happen. Um, and that's just because, like, you know, we're moving on, you know, it's basically, like, what happens when you add two vectors together, right? Like, it, you get a little, a little bit longer because you're, we're basically adding uh, however much on that direction and however much on that direction together and we're moving a bit faster. Um, so the way that we're going to kind of deal with that is that we're going to... Um, Let 
one second. I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, we're going to try to... Um, oh, one other thing that I want to uh, mention also is that um, our sprites are, like, our boxes and stuff like that are drawn from, from this corner. So, like, if we want to, we can, like, you know, realign them so that we're drawing them from the center, which... Uh, we might do next time because um, of how we're going to be doing the rest of the game. Um, it might, might just make sense to do that. But for now, let, we're talking about movement. So um, we're going to make two more variables. Um, and I'm going to call them player.ix and player.iy. And that stands for player um, input x and player input y. Uh, and so rather than then moving our player explicitly like this, um, I'm going to uh, actually get rid of these. Good, buddy. No. Okay. I don't know why my computer's being a being like that. Um, That's fine, I guess. Um, so here we're going to say player.iy equals negative one, player.iy equals one, player.ix equals negative one, player.iy equals one. So what this is doing is like we're we're basically tracking if we're pushing the button that that is associated with the direction that we care about, um, and uh, in order to like f do this kind of for real, um, we're also going to need to check to see if nothing is being pressed. So we're just going to do that by saying uh, if not of dot keyboard dot is down right. Oops. And um, not uh, love dot keyboard dot is down left. And this is kind of self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna like go through what it means anyway. So like, in addition to checking if something is true, we can also check to see if something is not true, right? So that's what this keyword means. It's like if this isn't happening. Um, and as you might imagine, and means if this is true as well as this being is true, what will the what follows will only happen if both of the following statements or preceding statements are true, right? Um, then and and we're just gonna say um, i uh, player dot ix equals zero. And then, uh, if if not love dot keyboard keyboard dot is down equals uh what is it up and not love dot keyboard dot is down equals down or down then and player dot i y equals zero so part one um cool uh phase two with that is a little bit more involved um and i'm just gonna like uh Got my my like example code. Here's a mess um, that I wrote for for my notes. So like, um, I should have gone back and made this clearer, um, but it's fine. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is basically check to see if the player is moving, and we do that uh, by multiplying all of these together and seeing if it is greater than one. 
Um, if it is, then it's moving. And if it's not, then we're not, right? Um, so we're gonna see, say if player.ix times player.iy or uh, I have two, but I don't think um, I don't think that I actually need that, but that's fine. Player, player dot because it's gonna be the same. It's fine. Um, it's player dot i y is greater than one. Then, and if this is true, if if our player is moving, um we're basically going to do the Pythagorean theorem to it, right? Um, so we're going to get a value called distance, which is basically like um, this this squared uh, plus this squared, um, and then we're going to multiply, or, or sorry, we're going to um, divide our input value by it. Um, so I'm just gonna type this out and then then gonna explain what what it means. <laughs> um, so we're gonna say distance distance equals math dot square root. There dot i x ix plus player dot iy times player dot iy. I think that there is a um a way of getting um I mean like there should be a way of, of you know squ uh, squaring a thing um in, built into love, but I don't remember what it is offhand. I think it might just be like like one of these and then two, but um when I was originally teaching this, I thought that this was clearer. Um, and then we're going to say uh, player.ix equals player.ix divided by distance player.iy equals player.iy divided by distance Then we're finally actually going to move our character. Um, sorry, there's like a, a bunch of notes that I have here that like add a bunch of stuff to this that we don't need right now. So I was just like kind of sorting through what what we do actually need. Um, yeah, um, player dot x equals player dot x plus player dot i x times player dot speed. Pretty sure that's just it. Forgot that all this extra junk was in here. I should have looked at this before uh, before doing this thing today. But player dot y equals player player dot y plus ah ah player dot this should be lowercase as a miss a parenthesis. X. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't super matter, but play player dot speed. All right, we need uh, to multiply this by delta time. Whoops. Okay. 
Okay, everything works except for uh, that button. I don't know why that is. Um, so this leads us to talking about our next kind of bug, right? Um, so when we're talking about debugging, there, there are two kinds of, um, broadly anyway, two, two kinds of errors that we might run into. One's called a syntax error, and that's like, you know, there's some garbage in our code, and we try to run it. Oh, that, I don't know why that, oh, I did save, that's why. Um, it's like, I, I don't know what config configjcfix is. Um, and so like, this is like the computer saying, I cannot read the words you wrote. Um, they're not in a language I understand. Um, and that's probably going to be like a lot when, when you're first starting out programming, that's going to be a lot of what your, um, what the, the errors you run into are, right? Um, the other kind is, is a little bit more insidious. It's, it's what I think is commonly called a logic bug. Um, I might have like made that up or something, but I think that that's what people call it. And that's what we're running into here, which is where, uh, did I just mess up my code? So like my, my right button is not working, but all the other buttons are. Um, so like the words are right, it's compiling, it's running, but they're not entirely doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? Um, and so let's look through this and see if uh, we can find out what the, what the problem is. Um, so I X I X. Oh, here we go. Accidentally put an, a Y instead of an X. There we go. So now our um, our diagonals are normalized. Cool. So as I said, to to like reiterate sort of how this all works, um, we're Yeah, uh, I thought that like um, compile time errors like actually threw something to the console though. Usually, I you know y'all do more actual programming than I do, so um, <laughs> so uh, might be mistaken on that. But like, I always was under the impression that like a um, a runtime or a compile time uh, error like produced some kind of output. Uh, but mm. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to like actual programming so um, <laughs> I just do video games um, so yeah to, to also hi Edward how are you doing um, so to reiterate how this works we're basically like taking our input and making it um Oh, gotcha, okay, yeah. Um, sorry, I got something stuck in my tooth earlier. I don't know what it is. It's bothering me. So, to reiterate sort of like what, what's going on here, we are taking our, our input, um, like, with the buttons that are being pressed and making that like a different variable than than the actual movement that's happening. So we're uh, looking at you know the the different key presses. So our up, down, our left, and our right, um, and just setting that to either zero or one or negative one, right? Um, and this is kind of like how Unity's input system works. Like the uh, Oh, gotcha. Okay, I'm just, like, I, my brain doesn't do words great a lot of the time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, once we get these, like, 
you know, like I said, this is kind of how Unity's input system works. Like you push a button and then it's either a zero or it's either a one or a negative one, depending on which direction you pressed. Um, and zero if it's neither. Um, if we took this out, it would just like move in the, the previous direction. And then we're taking those values um, and, and like I said, doing the Pythagorean theorem to them um, to, to normalize them. So we are taking our input and multiplying it or uh, dividing it rather by, by the distance value that we, we got from um, adding, adding up all the, the values and then square rooting them um, and then moving by that new amount. Um, and this, this will basically like always be a, um, a decimal. So that's kind of like how, how that works, right? Um, and it'll always be like the same, the same decimal, right? Um, so with all that done, we have a thing that moves, right? Um, you don't always have to have to do that, um, the, the diagonal normalization, but it's like, it's nice. It's a nice like touch. Um, and I think it makes games feel a little bit better. We'll talk, you know, probably more about game feel later, but like that's that's a whole thing that I'm not gonna get into right now. Um, it's like it's a lot, right? Um, and but you know, if you're if you're just like making something really fast, you don't really need that. But but it's you know we're talking about movement today, so that uh, I wanted to. <laughs> um, so. That almost brings us to the end of what I had planned for today, or it does bring us to the end of what I had planned for today, but um, I'm just gonna look through my notes and see if there's anything else that I really want to talk about right now. Um, because next time we're, we're mostly gonna be focusing on, uh, we're gonna do a bit more math, math C stuff. Um, we're gonna talk a bit about um, like game states because those are important. We're gonna basically do that in in the same way that, um, in the same way that we did uh, our player kind of. We're gonna use a table as what I'm trying to say. Um, we might do some like you know, add some screen padding or something like that so we we can't go off the screen. Um, but like most importantly, we're going to uh, make the thing that we're collecting show up. Um, and again, we're going to be using a table for that. So thank you again for joining me today. This has been, um, session one of, of game dev for everyone. Um, I hope that it was, you know, you got some, some useful stuff out of this, uh, big, big follows.com. <laughs> um, and again, like, uh, you know, you know where to find me on the internet. Uh, follow me on Twitter at at Cinerdie. Um, my DMs are open. If uh, if you want to ask questions or whatever, you know, shoot me a DM there if you want. But also, there's a Discord for this for this thing. Um, it's at uh, tinyurl.com/slash/gamedev for everyone. Um, thanks, thanks, Pepper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> buy more students um and like if you find, found anything useful here and can and want to drop me a few dollars at, at coffee.com slash highs and nil um pass around around a hat at the end of the lecture as as i want to do um and yeah that that's it so next time we're, we got a lot to get through but uh it's gonna be fun i think There's, we're actually gonna get into the meat of like how this game is gonna work um and yeah uh Join the Discord. Uh, you know, uh, let me know if you you come up with anything cool. Um, for next time, like if you want to, you can try like playing with different like ways of moving moving stuff around, or like making new objects is the thing that I would say like would be good to, to practice because that's kind of like the an an important thing, right? So like maybe like throw some some th some other objects in that like you know we're not doing a collision yet or anything like that, but like I don't know, maybe make them try to make them like move around or change state or something like that if you want uh if not that's cool too um we're going to uh we're going to be talking about all that in the weeks to come so thanks a lot for joining me um 
I'm, I'm glad that people are actually coming to this thing and seem to be enjoying it and getting something out of it. Uh, take care, y'all, and hope to see you next week. Bye.